Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at a once powerful titan of the Master League that I believe is back in a massive way, and that is Groudon. Since Landorus got Sandseer Storm, it's been a lot more difficult to use Groudon, as it did a lot of the stuff Groudon does while also beating Groudon. But with a small adjustment in moveset, I think Groudon is actually still incredibly powerful in the Master League. I've run this team for a bunch of sets, and I have yet to go negative even once. So without further ado, let's hop onto the matches, and let's take a look at Dragon Tail Groudon in action in the Open Master League. Hopping into the first match, picking up a positively Dragon Tail Groudon versus Palkia. This is one of the matchups where Dragon Tail is able to help quite a bit. Opponent accidentally mistimes it, giving me a Dragon Tail for free, but even without the free Dragon Tail, Groudon wins the zeros. So I'm going to be able to dictate switch advantage or shield advantage in this match. They shield, they'll go for the farm down. I get two more Dragon Tails. They're not going to be able to make a Spacer Ride right versus my Palkia, so I just bring in my own Palkia and get energy. Because against most Palkia lead teams, they're going to be weak to Palkia in the back. They send in Zygarde. This will be a little tricky, but not anymore. They throw instantly. They don't overfarm at all, and that means that I now have a pretty safe path to send in Dawn Wings. If they had just farmed up a bunch of energy, I can't really switch in Dawn Wings, but they threw all their energy. So now this is a very safe switch into Dawn Wings. In the back is Landorus. There's the Pokemon weak to Palkia in back of a Palkia lead. And now, I mean, I could just go on an absolute rampage with the Bat Dawn Wings here. I'm debuffed, but that's not going to matter. I can fire off the Moon Guys Beam. Down goes Landorus. In comes Zygarde. Zygarde trying to get some damage before the Moon Geist is going to be able to connect. I will commit the shield, and now I can fire off another Moon Geist. Again, it's debuffed, so it will not be enough to knock out. But Switch Clock will be up very soon, so I'm going to be able to switch out into the Palkia, get the farm down, and take the win. Interesting lead in the next match, Groudon versus the Duskmane, and they don't stay to check the fast move, they just switch in Zygarde. And that's a little bit of the bait and switch with the Dragon Tail Groudon. Of course, with Go Battle League being a blind format with movesets not revealed, you can get away with some trickery like this. Now, Groudon with Dragon Tail is still able to win the zeros versus the Duskmane. When more shields are in play, it does get more uncomfortable for the Groudon, just due to the fact that your pacing is a lot slower than with Mudshot. But a lot of the time, if they see a ground type, they're not going to stay in. They're just going to switch out, and then I can win the zeros. I leave with a Fire Punch for the Duskmane, and I can realign the Duskmane versus what I have in the back. Versus this team, I'm expecting they have Palkia in the back, so I'm going to make a bit of a controversial play. I'm bringing in Dawn Wings into Duskmane. This is a losing matchup for the bat. However, I'm predicting it's Palkia in the back, and if it is, then I want my Palkia to be able to neutralize theirs with Dragon Breath. I go for the Dark Pulse. They are going to let that through, and now I farm down, and they're not even going to be able to make it to a Spatial Rend. They're short here. I was counting. This is not 17, so I can let that go. Just the Aqua Tail, and now... I mean, this game is over. They just don't have enough HP. I end up throwing the Aqua Tail. Throwing the Aqua Tail doesn't really accomplish anything. I should just go for the farm, but realistically... Either way, this is going to be a win, as Palkia, with a little bit of stutters, is able to farm down and take the win. Uh-oh, we've got a massive core breaker on our hands in the next game, and its name is Tapu Bulu. Tapu Bulu, definitely not a fun Pokemon for this team to see, as I'm ABA weak. I end up no shielding as they go for a Nature's Madness. I wait the turn to make sure they don't catch, and I return fire with a Fire Punch. Fire Punch will connect. Opponent is going to be firing off another Nature's Madness. I'm just going to let this go, farm down with my Dawn Wings, and then hope that if they're leading the Tabu Bulu, then they're going to be weak in the back to Palkia. They're going to make another Nature's Madness. That's fine by me. I'm going to let it go. Oh, they're running Mega Horn, and that hits for significant damage. What are they going to send in here? I have a ton of energy. In comes Palkia, and I'm doing what I love to do with Dawn Wings, and that is bait. I bait with the Dark Pulse. Pressure the shield, and now I can make the Moongeist beam. They're going to be able to force the shield off of me, but I'm very okay with that. Basically, nothing in this meta wants to take a Moongeist beam, so if they had a Ghost Resist, they would have brought it in. So I can safely just click Moongeist instantly, and now bring in my own Palkia. My hope is that my Palkia will have play versus what they have in the back, and I'm up energy, so I will commit the shield. It is just going to be the Aqua Tail in the back. It is Heatran. And, oh, Trainer, I'm so sorry. Heatran, really cool core breaker, but unfortunately, not going to do well versus an up energy Palkia. So Palkia is going to be able to make the back-to-back -back Aqua Tails, knocking out the Heatran, and I get to farm down their Palkia and take the game. 
another fairy type lead. Again, these leads are more difficult because you have Dragon Tail, but you can still win it as the Groudon. This is how I like to play this out. They're going to be running Play Rough and Wild Charge. Almost no one runs Close Combat anymore. And with Play Rough and Wild Charge, this is winnable for Groudon in the twos with one bait. It doesn't matter where you bait, as long as you get the shield, then for the remainder, you can go straight Precipice Blades. So the threat of a Precipice Blades is so severe that they end up shielding the bait. And now I can start firing off the nuke moves. I do want to punish a no shield since they already shielded one bait. So I will fire off the Precipice Blades. They end up shielding. I'm going to shield back and I'm going to be able to win the zeros here. One nice thing about people not running close combat anymore is they can't really afford to wild charge a Groudon. So I'm going to be able to wait the turn, make sure we don't see a catch onto a flyer, go for the Precipice Blades. And that's a Dragon Tail user winning the twos versus my opponent's fairy type. They're going to get a big farm with the Necrozma, which is awkward. I'm going to bring in Palkia. If it's Outrage, I can barely survive it from this health range, and I will make it Aqua Tail. It's the Dark Pulse, so they don't have the Outrage, and that's good news for me. Now, the question will be, how much do they decide to overfarm? The Aqua Tail will get them low. Opponent is going to throw. Dark Pulse doesn't quite KO here. If it doesn't, I have to hard switch into the Dawn Wings. I send in the Dawn Wings opponent, going to try and make them move. They do not get there. In the back is their own Palkia. And that is game over. That's back-to-back -back fairy leads, which core break this team, ending in victory, because Dawn Wings is such a good end game sweeper. Ground on so good at forcing those shields down, and then Dawn Wings able to make opponents pay in the end game. Dragon Tail Ground on versus Dialga. If my opponent doesn't throw before I get to the Presbyterian Blades, I will bait. At this point, they have enough energy for a roar of time. They really don't want to lose it, so they'll almost always shield there. And now I'm just gonna call the bait. Iron Head doesn't KO here. They have to Roar of Time. Most will Iron Head because they don't want to throw Roar Energy. They end up catching a Fire Punch onto Landorus, and I'm going to make an interesting play here. If you notice, I don't immediately switch into my Hard Counter. Instead, I let myself get farmed down, and then I bring in Palkia because I don't want to be switch locked. Landorus going to be able to debuff me. I really don't want to be permanently switch locked and be unable to swap. So instead, I let my Groudon go. I... I was going to say pick up the knockout with the Palkia. They end up double shielding, and that's just game over. Unless they have a dark type in the back, they've instantly lost because Dawn Wings in the 2-0 just cannot lose. So Sansir will pick up the KO. I bring in the Bat, and it's Zygarde in the back. Zygarde can take a Moongeist, but again, in the 2 to zeros, I very comfortably beat this Pokemon. They're going to go for the Crunch. They do not get the debuff, thank goodness. Nothing more annoying than Zygarde, which is already incredibly bulky, getting a damage boost by having the Crunch debuff. Opponent ends up throwing their Crunch right away, so they give me a free Shadow Claw. I think I'm going to look to overfarm quite substantially, and then I am going to go for a slight undercharge. There's still one off, so if I can perfectly undercharge this and get one more claw, which I can, I'll be in a good spot. They send in Landorus, trying for a catch. They don't get it. In comes Dialga. It's getting KO'd with a Moongeist Beam, and Dragon Tail Groudon, that pairing with the Dawn Wings is just so good, because the Groudon is so good at pressuring the shields, and then Dawn Wings just sweeps every endgame. Lost lead in the next match, Dragon Tail Groudon versus Ho-Oh. Dragon Tail Groudon does do better against Ho-Oh than the Mudshot variant, but it's still not a winning matchup. I save switch into the Dawn Wings, out comes Zygarde, and this is not ideal. And to add insult to injury, there's the Crunch debuff. No, the Boot Guys will connect. That does substantial damage. I do lag a little bit there, but I don't lose any turns. Here, I'm testing whether my opponent's counting, and they're not. Dark Pulse wouldn't KO. Now, the awkward thing is I can't win the twos here. Up shields, the uh, Dawn Wings can actually take this, but down shields, I can't. I'm going to save energy, switch into the Groudon, and snipe right as they make the Earthquake. Out comes Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh, going to be met with a Precipice Blades. I have to throw here. It's not the most optimal timing, but I just need the damage before they're able to KO me with the Sacred Fire. And Ho-Oh is going to be firing off their energy. So Ho-Oh goes for the Sacred Fire. Down goes Groudon. I still do have the Palkia. The Palkia is going to be hit with a Brave Bird. And Brave Bird going to do a lot of damage. In the back, opponent has their own Palkia. And here, I think I should have baited. I think I should have baited, and I didn't but I wanted to guarantee the shield before I comboed. But by not baiting, this means that I don't have residual energy to be able to take out the Ho-Oh. Because back in comes the Ho-Oh, they leave with the move, and unfortunately, I tried to get it as close as I could, but 
not able to take the win as I get knocked out by Ho-Oh. Well, we get a chance for redemption in the next match. As I again lead into Ho-Oh, I save switch into the Dawn Wings. Opponent get a stay in this time, so I'm going to farm up and go for a bait. They have a lot of energy. They do not want to take a lot of damage, so I'm able to successfully bait with the Dawn Wings, and now I have the advantage in this matchup. They go for the Sacred Fire. Sacred Fire does get the debuff. In comes Dialga, and I will launch the Moongeist. Even at minus one, Moongeist Beam is terrifying. It's able to connect. I should be able to make it to the Dark Pulse as well. My switch timer will be up soon. At this point, I don't really expect Groudon to have value in this game, so I'm going to use it as a massive meat shield for this Roar of Time. I was going to get farm done anyway, so I may as well use this as an opportunity to basically get the value out of the Groudon that I can, and I'm going to rely on Palkia up a shield to win this game. The Ho-Oh does leave with energy, so even though... I am up a shield, I'm going to have to give the shield right back, but I'm predicting it's going to be their own Palkia in the back, so me up energy, I should be in a good spot, but no, it's Xerneas in the back, that is not what I was expecting to see, and throwing away the Groudon ends up costing me this game, because I need a catch, I expect them to throw instantly, they do not, and unfortunately that game will end in a loss, so Ho-Oh lead proving to be a little bit tricky, but what do you know, there's the third Ho-Oh in a row, okay. Let's see if this time we are able to avenge our losses. This time it is going to be the shiny ho -Oh, playing it out the same as it did last game. I'm going to be going for the Dark Pulse Bait. I'm able to get the shield opponent. Ends up throwing right away, so I get a free Shadow Claw. That's quite nice. The Sacred Fire is going to be shielded up. I do get debuffed. I'm going to look to farm and go for a knockout with the Moongeist. Although, due to the debuff, I don't know if this quite KOs. The Moongeist does not 1 HP ho -Oh. Oh, that is rough, but I'm learning from last game. I am going to get energy on this Groudon, and in the back, they have their own bat. They only go for the Dark Pulse, though. My guess is they just wanted some chip damage onto the Groudon, but I don't have to respect it if they only go for the Dark Pulse. I have to respect it if they go for the Moon Guys. I go for the Presbyterian Blade that picks up the knockout, and in the back is Dialga. And this is instantly game winning for me. Dialga has 16 turns worth of Dragon Breath. Double Iron Head is 34. And it's 17 to a Spatial Rend. Which means I'm going to be able to outpace here. Well, with them throwing, I'm going to be able to outpace by 2 instead of 1. Opponent does the mental math, realizes they're lost, and they concede the match. We move to the next match. Finally not a Ho-Oh lead, thank goodness. And it's going to be the Palkia. And we know Groudon does great here. Opponent going to throw on very nice timing, and I'm just going to take my Zero Shield win. I'm very happy with that, so I will go for the Presbyterian Blades. Opponent makes a beautiful catch onto Ho-Oh. Oh my goodness, that is really unfortunate, and they did get the sneak through. It didn't visually show the sneak, but here's a really interesting thing. They Brave Bird instantly. They want to get this damage off, but by doing so, guess who gets to farm all the way down? And that is so, so bad for my opponent. I have so much energy. I'm nearly a back-to-back -back spatial rends, but I'm baiting. I'm expecting they're going to shield here. I am able to get the shield. You know what? I'm baiting again. I don't care. I'm double baiting this man. And we get both shields and the spatial rend. You cannot give Palkia this much energy. Spatial rend connects. Dialga is able to get the farm down. I do the peekaboo play by switching in the Dawn Wings, catching on the 1 HP Groudon. What do they even have in the back? It's just going to be that low health Palkia, and the opponent will resign the match. We face a familiar foe in the next match, leading the Dragon Tail Groudon into this Zacian. Again, almost every Zacian is on Snarl, Play Rough, and Wild Charge, so the matchup can play out pretty similarly. Again, I'm going to go for the bait first. You can bait either the first time or the second time. The important thing is just make sure you bait once, and then if you do, then you're going to be able to win the two shield. They go for the play rough. Groudon simply does not care. They're going to be able to outpace, but now I'm more than happy to start matching shields, look to over farm, and begin to spam out these precipice blades. So I'll look to farm up. Play to the charge attack priority tie, as Precipice Blades will be able to pick up the knockout. They're going to shield, but I'm more than happy just to shield back. They can potentially look to try and catch out of this matchup if they want to, so I am going to wait the turn. Unfortunately, the game visually didn't show me the fast move until after I clicked it, so that's a really discouraging sign. They bring in Dialga, and this is going to be very tricky. This is not good. 
I think I have to bring in the Dawn Wings. Dawn Wings can make a Dark Pulse as they get to their Draco Meteor, and Dawn Wings wins charge attack priority. It has an incredible attack stat, and now this is just going to set up Palkia in the zeros. I have to trust that Palkia can do well versus whatever they have in the back. It's the Draco. It's going to be their own Palkia, and this is just a win. I make the Spatial Rend. I knock out, and their Dialga is pretty low, so I can get a farm down here. This game will end in victory. In comes their Dialga. I stutter, and they live on one HP. Oh, that absolutely hurts. All right, hopping into the final match. Dragon Tail Groudon versus Zygarde. Anytime you see Zygarde, you can very safely assume that there's going to be Dusk Mane in the back. I'm going to farm up and CMP tie my Precipice Blades with their Earthquake. Precipice Blades is able to land, and that is some massive, massive damage. I'm fine taking the Earthquake. They're going to end up going for Double Crunch instead, and that still doesn't KO. So again, very happy to just let this damage go with the Groudon. The Crunch will get me to like 1 HP. They send out Landorus. Landorus going to be met with the Fire Punch. So I'm expecting it's going to be Landorus, and then they're going to have the Dusk main in the back. Palkia is my best answer to the Landorus. So one nice thing, Dragon Tail Groudon does win the zeros versus Landorus, just because the Dragon Tail Fire Punch combination really adds up over time. I'll look to pick up the knockout with the Aqua Tail. Opponent going to have a choice to make, and they do elect to commit the shield. I decide to let this go. I want to try and save shields. In the back, it is going to be Duskmane, and I switch in Dawn Wings. This is a bad matchup for the Dawn Wings, but the thing I have going for me is going to be the fact that I'm up a shield. So even though I'm a CMP loser in this situation, I'm still fine. So even if I lose the second CMP tie, I'm still going to be able to land the Dark Pulse, and it looks like it was actually a coin flip there. So they won the first, I won the second, but either way, I'm still okay, because I can pick up the knockout. They bring in the Landorus, Landorus gets Shadow Clawed down, and one HP on that Dawn Wings, and we're able to take the win. All in all, I had a ton of fun getting to run this team. I recommended it to a couple members of my Discord. The team is not a team of my own creation. It's a team that I saw a fellow streamer run and they ended up abandoning it after like two sets because they didn't have great results with it. But seeing it, I thought it was really well constructed. So I wanted to try it out and it's been unbelievably consistent. Like the few people in my Discord who've been trying it have reported some very nice ELO gains. So overall, if you're looking to make a last second legend push in the Master League, I think this is a great team to do it. Obviously, when the move updates happen, the meta is going to shift to the Master League, and I'll look to try and find a team that can crack that new meta. But for the final week, this is a really solid team to run. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.